on the morning after the night before, both the main parties appear by and large to be holding their ground, especially in London. That means relief for Conservatives as a predicted disaster fails to materialise and disappointment for Labour who failed in the bid to take control of uh, top target Barnet. That was actually gained uh, by the Conservatives from no overall control. Now, the row over anti-Semitism is believed or alleged to have cost Labour votes in an area of North London uh, with a substantial Jewish community. Well, joining me now is Ken Livingston, uh, the former London mayor who is currently suspended from the Labour Party over remarks he made in 2016, in which he suggested Adolf Hitler had supported Zionism during the 1930s. Welcome to Hi. you, Mr Livingston. Uh, speaking to mm. some of your former Labour colleagues in mm. Barnet, I mean, they were specifically blaming you mm. uh, for the loss. Well, I think there's a lot of Jewish people, not just in Barnet, but all over the place, that believe I said Hitler was a Zionist. That was the big smear on the day that I was suspended. And one thing that I find amazing, two years on, and this is still being repeated, it was in the Financial Times, it's on the Huffington Post website, and... And the, what we said there was accurate. Yeah, you what you said, and you, there was a deal done. I mean, you only have to go on Jerusalem's Holocaust Memorial website. One of the documents you can download is about the deal that the Zionists did with Hitler in the 30s. I think Hitler wanted to get all the Jews out of Germany, and the Zionists wanted to move them all to and create a Jewish state in Palestine. And so they collaborated. They didn't like each other, but they collaborated to do that. And there was a degree of duress and confiscation of property uh, oh, God, by, yeah. by the Nazis, which clearly was not Zionist. Horrendous government, I mean, no, no, yeah. undoubtedly. But the simple fact is, I mean, We've had a general secretary up until very recently who just allowed this to bubble on. You've got so many people spending no, for but nearly see, two years. I mean, one can appreciate your concern, but you know, you, you are someone who's been a Labour MP, uh, uh, a Labour Mayor of London, and just going on talking in that way mm. is alienating, is it not? a lot of the Jewish community in places like Barnet? Well, basically, I don't do... I, I basically turn down almost every interview to, sure. to talk about this, because it, it's a distraction. I mean, during this last month, we've had endless stories about Labour and anti-Semitism, yeah. not getting across to people what we wanted to do in local government and so sure. on. But what's quite striking is I mean, we're clearly going to hold 20 councils in London. The best year we ever had was 71, we had 21. And I, I was campaigning with Ed Miliband, our leader, yeah. four years ago all over London. And the result was depicted as a landslide for Labour and opening the way to a Labour government. So holding on to that, our second best yeah. ever result is good. But do you accept that in Barnet you may have cost the party control? Well, if anybody believes I said it was a Zionist, yes, that is damaging. And I think what's been so bad is that two years on this smear about me is still there unchallenged. It, I mean, when I was suspended, the General Secretary didn't even pick up the phone to say, had I said Hitler was a Zionist, I'm just suspended without any discussion. Yeah. And the simple fact is, I, mean, I think now yeah. we've got a good General Secretary. Yeah. She is committed to sorting all this out not letting it just rumble on and on. I mean, the, the best advice might be not to bring Hitler into contemporary politics. Well, I, I only do it when I'm asked a question, like you've just done. Yeah. I mean, I have never made a speech or written an article about Hitler. I, but I mean, I've nasty. covered you over the time. I mean, you, you, are, you are a child of the war, uh, yeah, you, and, you grow, and, and you do tend to refer to it. Well, uh, it was it, the it, defining it, issue of our childhood. We, yeah. we all watched. I mean, yeah. Our parents had all we, been fighting. But shouldn't we have moved on from there? I, well, I have. I mean, I mainly go on about, you know, cutting fares and building council housing. But if you're asked, I, have you ever interviewed me and yeah. asked me a question I've not answered it? That's what I do. It always gets you yeah. into trouble if you tell the truth. I mean, the other thing you could do, you know, you obviously want to help the Labour Party. Mm. I guess you could just resign. Well, I, I'm not going to my grave without this issue being resolved. I mean... I mean, I have effectively been retired for the last only six or seven years, you know. Um, so you still I, want to be a member of the Labour Party? I, mean, I, I want to do anything I can to get Jeremy Corbyn in Downing Street because I want a better world for my kids. Now, what about the remaining results? Tar Hamlets uh, is to come, which again has been very contentious. Well, basically, in Tower Hamlets, you've got three likely candidates who can be elected mayor. Effectively, they're all Labour. That they're, they've split apart and they're running as independents and so on. So, I mean, the Tories aren't going to be making any gains in Tower Hamlet. It's just which of the Labour factions will, will actually win. Do you think, overall, looking at these results, it shows that 
yes, there is strong support for the type of socialism which you mm. and Jeremy Corbyn mm. believe in, but unfortunately for you, that's not widespread enough for you ever to form a government. Oh, I, I mean, remember the shock people had with the, the general election result last time. I mean, Jeremy, which, which Labour lost. I mean, yeah, but we got the biggest increase in the Labour vote since 1945. And if we hadn't had two years of Labour MPs undermining Jeremy, if they'd been out there campaigning, we only needed to take another seven seats and Jeremy would have been leading a minority government. And so I think it's going to be another intense and bitter struggle. He'll be demeaned in all the, the Tory mm. press, just like I've always been. But I think his policies connect with people. He, I mean, he went into that election saying, we're not carrying on with austerity. We're going to get people fully. But how do you go from here where, you know, it's at best even Stevens, probably Labour slightly behind, according to our projections, mm. to winning a general election without softening your policies, without moving towards the but centre? We had that big increase in our vote that took us up to 40%, which was, you know, more than we'd had since, yeah. you know, you, Blair won in... Uh, Except the Tories got 42. Yeah, 42, and everyone was really surprised that, you know, that, that they didn't actually get the majority that Theresa May thought she had. That election, I mean, Jeremy was able to connect with people with the policies he was talking about. People are sick and tired. We got the third most expensive fares in, in the world, I think. I, or it might yeah. even be the most expensive. We haven't got any council housing being built. I, we're not getting investment. Yeah, but, but those are your policies and they're not overtaking the Tories. I'm asking you how you overtake the Tories. Oh, they the will Tories. overtake the Tories next time because our economy is limping along with no real growth. I mean, people's living standards are declining. Pay isn't keeping up with inflation. Nothing's going to get better. And so I think even more when we hit that next election and all the sort of trivia has to be pushed aside and you have to focus yeah. on the policies, yeah. Jeremy will get but that you majority. See, I mean, just speaking to James Cleverly, uh, mm. Deputy uh, Chairman of the Conservative Party, mm. and he's saying, look, the Conservatives, you may not like them, but they are talking about bread and butter issues in council elections and they intend to go on talking mm. about that. Whereas Labour just talks about how terrible the Tories are, and he says that isn't connecting. No, I mean, if you actually look at the manifestos produced by the various boroughs at, the, at this election, there's been the commitments there to try and improve public services, which isn't easy yeah. given the but government's they haven't cut funding. Through, that's my point. Well, I think part of the problem is for the last month, everything about the Labour Party in the media has been about anti Semitism. I mean, any serious debate about our policies just hasn't happened. Mm. And that's why we've got to get this issue resolved. And I think the new General Secretary will have sorted this out by the end of summer. Do you think you are going to be expelled from the party? Well, uh, when we had the hearing a year ago, I said, if you expel me, I will go to court. You haven't got a chance of winning, because how can you expel someone for stating historical fact, but take no action against MPs who lied about what you'd said and claimed I said Hitler was a Zionist? So, uh, I, I'm optimistic. I believe that the yeah. truth should prevail. But you see, if you go on fighting it, that's going to be back in the headlines and that's not going to help the Labour well, Party by your own I mean, uh, definition. That's why I think I mean, that our new general secretary has sort all this out rap rap rapidly. We're, and we're hearing talk that by the middle of July, all these cases, which have been hanging around for two years, should be sorted out.